something like that. And if you zoom in and you keep zooming in on zero, you just, it just keeps going back and forth. You can't narrow it down to some specific number. So when you have oscillating behavior like that and you keep zooming in, doesn't change, that also does not exist. Okay, so the next thing we have here is the limit definite or delta epsilon, delta epsilon proof. So this is not tested on the AP exam, and some of you may say, well, why, why are we going to go over it? Um, I had a student go to the University of Utah quite a few years ago, and uh, they went over the Delta Epsilon proofs, and uh, some of the students were freaking out because they had AP calculus, and they had never heard of this, and it was right at the beginning of the class. So he kind of chuckled, and he remembered that we had gone over it. And so we're not going to do a ton with it. I'm just going to go over a couple basic examples. Um, so the formal definition of a limit. So it should make sense to you that I've been talking about as we get really close to and stuff like that. That's not very mathematical. That's not very firm as a definition. So we need something a little more sp specific mathematically, um, mathematical way to describe this process. So these underlined phrases have no meaning. What does get close to mean? Well, that's different for all of us, right? Like if somebody's standing too close to you, like we all have a different uh, kind of boundary there as to where, where it starts to get a little too close. So here's a more mathematical definition. It's called delta epsilon. That's the uh, symbol for delta epsilon. It's in alphabetical order, so that still shouldn't be that hard to remember. Delta is x, epsilon is y, delta epsilon. So it shows that, okay, the getting close to is the delta. So what we're saying is as you get within this amount on each side of x, you're going to get within a certain amount on y also. So by limiting the distance from c on x, you will, you will automatically limit the distance on y. Okay, don't stress out about this too much. Really, you just want to memorize, we don't want to, but uh, we need to memorize uh, this. And um, we are almost done here with these first notes. So this is my first time ever doing some video notes, so try to bear with me. Hopefully, uh, they'll get better as we go. All right. So highlighting a couple examples that are coming up. And so in this example, this is a pretty basic example. It's kind of silly, but y equals x. So obviously the change in y, the change in x is the same as the change in y because the slope is 1. Okay. So if we limit the distance on each side, delta, to be 0.5, and then we plug that in the equation, then it's also going to be a 0.5 difference in epsilon. Okay, so these four problems are very similar. There's a, a slight difference, but uh, we just want to memorize this process. So the first thing you're going to do is find the limit. Then you're going to write uh, the limit, uh, the function minus the limit, then you're going to factor, and then you're going to divide. So you're just repeating this process over and over again. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take this and plug it in here. So that's going to be, I'm kind of color code this for you. So we have the limit as x approaches c of this blue function, and that's going to equal this red limit. Okay, so now it's color coded. So if we plug in 3 into the function here, and again, this is an odd one because the slope is 1, but if we plug 3 in there, then the limit is 3. It's called direct substitution. You plug the number in there. Okay, so then the next step is f of x minus c. So f of x minus c, well, the function is x, 
and C is 3. So it's, and it's the absolute value. So you're kind of just memorizing this format here. So that's going to be less than delta. That's the function, that's x. So now, here, actually that's always going to be x minus c. That's not the function. That's delta is this one over here. So we're always going to take, always going to take x minus whatever c is there. Now we're going to do the function. So that's the limit. Now we're going to do the function minus the limit, this part right here. So the function is x and the limit is 3. So this is an unusual case because it's a, it's a slope's 1. All right. So normally, uh, and sometimes they give us a number for that, and sometimes we'll just put an epsilon in for that. And I'm going to show you an example of that. So that's it because now these match. Since they match, that's what we want. And so that's the answer. So delta is 0 0.05, which again, given the example up here, the slope was 1, so that should make sense. The delta and the epsilon is going to be the same because it goes up 1 over 1. All right, so now this one's a little more interesting because it's not uh, a slope of 1. So let's highlight that specifically. Okay, so again, same procedure. Remember, all four of the, these last three examples were almost done. Same thing here. So we're going to find the limit first. So by find the limit, you're going to plug in. So 3 times 4 minus 6. Okay, so 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. So the limit is 6. Okay, so that's obviously that's very simple. You were doing that in middle school, evaluating expressions, plugging that straight in. So we're always going to start with the absolute value of x minus the c value. So the c value here is 4. So that's going to be minus 4. And that's less than delta. Okay, and that's going to be on all four of these examples, less than delta. Um, and then we're going to take the function. So step two is to take the function minus the limit. So the function is 3x minus 6. And the limit was minus 6. Okay. And that is less than, now in this case they gave us a number. So we're going to use that number. So 0 0.5. Okay. Now, what's the third step? The third step is to factor. So if we factor, uh, this would be 3x minus 12, and then we can factor a 3 out of that. So that would be 3 times x minus 4. When you're factoring, you're always trying to get these things to match up, so that kind of helps you in what you're looking for there. Okay, and so the last step here would be to divide both sides by 3. Okay, so now delta is equal to this, but this, we want to know what that is as a decimal, and I've had students uh, mess that up before, so we want to be careful, because in calculus you have to round off to three decimal places. So we've got 0 0.05 divided by 3. So 3 doesn't go into 0, 3 goes into 5 one time, so we subtract 2, add a 0 there, that's going to be 6, that's 18, 2, another 0, that's going to be 6 again. So we need to round this off to three decimal places. So the answer here is delta equals 0 0.017. And they literally grade it to the third decimal place. So it's super important that we round off properly to that value. And I've had several students make mistakes on that arithmetic of de dividing decimals. So be super careful there. All right, last example, two parts. Last example, two parts. So same process, one, two, three, four. Now, when you do this, when we're doing notes, I should have said, um, it's a good opportunity here to pause and try to, to do. So really, after that first, uh, after this example, when I showed you how to do this problem, you should have paused the video and you should have tried to do the first step here and then play and see and say, oh yeah, okay, I did the first step. And really try to do it without looking at this if you can, okay? So try to do it without looking to see if you picked up how to do it. Then play, and when you play, 
do one step at a time and then pause it. Do one step. You don't want to do the whole thing and then find out you were doing it wrong. So same thing here. So really what you'd want to do is pause the video now and then try this out one step at a time. So hopefully you remember, pause, try the first step. Play. Okay, so the first step is to calculate the limit. So we're going to plug one in here.